zero RB drafts get people all hot to trot. But today we're talking about a strategy that made people millions of dollars last year by going zero RB. So what is zero RB if you haven't done a zero RB draft before? It is where you draft zero running backs before round seven or eight of your drafts. During the first seven to eight rounds, your goal is to win at every other position. We want you to get an elite level quarterback. We want you to absolutely hammer the wide receiver position. We want you to get elite level tight end options and get, like we said, enough wide receivers so that you have a ton of options in the flex before we absolutely start to hammer out those running back positions. Now, I talked about yesterday how we absolutely love to draft running backs with legendary upside, but when we're talking that these running backs that you're going to be getting in round eight, in round nine, later on in the drafts, a lot of these guys aren't going to be having any type of legendary upside, but they will be having some consistent RB2 to even potentially RB1 weeks for you, which is going to be just enough points per game difference to help you and your team win. So let's talk a little bit about why we are doing this, why people would be addressing the wide receiver position, the tight end position, the quarterback position, and not getting the elite level running back. So if we take a look at this chart talking about some of the RBs over the last few seasons, it really comes down to the fact that running backs get injured more than wide receivers. If we take a look at this data, we're going to see that literally since 2015, it's been around three games missed from the top 20 RBs taken in ADP before the season. Now we're seeing how the serious injury chance really goes to about 19%. So you're really shooting out of the shot in the dark that out of the top 20 RBs, you might have a running back that gets seriously injured. Now we're talking about football. So of course, every position has a high chance of injury probability. If we take a look at the average games missed of top 20 wide receivers in ADP, we're going to see that the average wide receiver misses 1.84 games missed and a 12.5% chance of serious injury. So wide receivers, as much as as there might be lacking in production or there's some questions about their overall production consistency compared to like a workhorse running back, you're going to see that the overall upside is very similar to the wide receivers, but a lot less downside on the injury front here based on the data since 2015. So the real question that you're going to be asking, okay, Caleb, so you're telling me that we have to draft wide receivers, tight ends, QBs, we're taking running backs late, but then of course, how are we going to supplement that running back production during the season? We look at last year, for instance, there were a bunch of of late round running backs that absolutely were there to help demolish for us. We talk about a guy like Kyron Williams who were able to find off the waiver wire. You're talking about a guy drafted super late like a Devon A. Chain who got drafted super late. Absolutely RB demon. Talk about a guy like DeAndre Swift who would be taken in the RB dead zone last year who absolutely outperformed. We could even bring up a guy like a Rashad White. So there are these guys each and every year that you're able to get a little bit later on that provide a ton of fantasy football value. It's just about trying to find it. Now, when we look, like we said, in this like round, late round four to early round six of the dead zone, like I said, what's going to be the difference between taking a guy like a Kenneth Walker and like a guy like a James Conner in the seventh, eighth round? Like that's kind of my question when we're looking at the overall value, because there are some really old running backs, even like a guy like an Alvin Kamara who's starting to go in the RB dead zone a little bit, even though last year was RB three on a points per game basis, you're able to find guys and target guys that maybe there's more question marks. Maybe it's age, whether it's offense, they're not, they got a little bit of warts on them. But we can find similar level values in the RB dead zone than you can earlier in drafts. And even like we said, later out past the RB dead zone than you can in the RB dead zone. So let's talk a little bit about some of the zero RB myths. The first one is going to be, especially for you oldens that have been playing a while. Like I said, I've been playing fantasy football since 2007. It's absolutely crazy to think that people are going zero RB and they feel good about it. But a lot of people say, oh my goodness, I need a running back that can be a league winner. And that's true. There's a higher, if you actually look at the odds, there is a higher chance chance that if you land on a league winning high upside player like a Christian McCaffrey, like a Jonathan Taylor, and that absolutely hits for you, that you have a higher percentage chance of winning your league. But we also just showed you the injury metrics for these running backs. So if we are just banking on the fact that they have a higher risk of probability, that also means that they have a higher bust rate compared to their similar wide receiver counterparts. I think a lot of people are going to say, hey, it doesn't work. Like it does work. Like we're looking at guys from the last two years over on Underdog, they've won millions of dollars, thousands of dollars using the strategy. Now, I know best ball is different than your standard home league, and that's what someone's going to say down in the comments. So I would like to address that straight away. Yes, it is a little bit different. A lot of the principles still apply the same. You're able to add waivers. Like that's an advantage on redraft leagues than even best ball is you're able to get some of these guys that are going to burst out onto the scene that we were not aware about. And that's what makes it super exciting about the first myth that zero RB doesn't work. It can work. And especially if you are diligent on your waiver wire. Number two, it's going to be zero running back is also king. 
That's also a myth. A lot of people like zero running back. I My preferred method really is zero running back. But we're not talking about zero running back. We're talking about zero running back. But zero running back, if you draft the right wide receivers, if you hit the right level upside, boom, bada, boom, zero running back can be super beneficial. But it doesn't mean that I'm doing zero running back every time. And then a lot of other people are going to say, hey, my scoring format is going to dictate what matters for zero RB. That is 100% furthest from the truth. Because if you're playing in any league, granted, maybe if you're like in a standard, you might be able to convince me. But anything in a half PPR, PPR, any type of bonuses, like tight end, quarterback, and wide receiver, all super important. And especially like no one's just playing in two running back, two wide receiver, tight end QB league. Like if that's the case, then of, of course the running backs take priority in that type of format. But assuming most people have one flex, some people have two flex, three flex, like everything is on the board here for zero running back. So like I said, we are going to be doing a little bit of a mock draft here just so that you guys can see what a zero running back draft would look like. So we're going to do a zero RB draft in sleep full PPR and we're going to be here at the 106 and Jamar Chase falls to us at the 106 so we will take Jamar Chase in this format like we said we're going zero RB so we'll have to see what wide receiver falls back to us in the second but I think this is going to be a really great exercise to show you guys exactly what your team could look like sleeper ADP honestly hasn't fully adjusted to me yet and so that's the part that makes it really exciting like we said so we're here on the board a guy like a Kyron Williams Sam Laporta Josh Allen is available there's some good running backs I will admit there are some good running backs on the board but we're doing zero RB so really between me it's between Brandon Ayuk and Nico Collins I like Nico Collins more this year than Brandon Ayuk Josh Allen's off the board Devon Travis Kelsey Kyron Mike Evans Sam Laporta Sam Laporta was also kind of in consideration for me there Brandon Ayuk fell pretty pretty big there but we're back on the clock here like we said we went a full two wide receivers and so if we're going to continue looking kind of across the board we got a pretty big tier gap and I'm going to be taking another wide receiver now Stefan Diggs that's interesting Debo Samuel DJ Moore for me I like uh, Jalen Waddle here as my third wide receiver. So we've absolutely hammered the wide receiver position with our first three picks. You know, a guy like Patrick Mahomes, that could have been interesting. I still felt like it was early. I have to say, I liked Malik Neighbors, Lamar Jackson. It felt a little bit early in those values. And we're back up on the clock here. Are we just going to continue because they address the wide receiver position? Because I do like a Mark Andrews. I do like a Dalton Kincaid. But I think one of those guys is going to fall back to us. And pretty much it's all pretty clear for me at the wide receiver position. But we'll see if we're going to get lucky with the tight end that falls back. We'll, we'll, we'll address another wide receiver here. And I like the value here on Cooper Cup. So we want Jamar Chase, Nico Collins, Jalen Waddle, Cooper Cup. Mark Andrews is off the board. Can we get a tight end to fall? Can we get a tight end to fall? Don Kincaid, that was going to be one that I was intrigued by. And we're back on the clock here. And maybe I should have gone Mark Andrews because I do like George Pickens and T Higgins. We're looking at the tight end position. We do have Kyle Pitts, which I still have Kyle Pitts pretty right here in the fifth round. Feels pretty good. So right here, I will be going with Kyle Pitts. And like we said, we're doing this on the fly. This is there's nothing that I I could just stop this draft and show you a better draft. But this is what I would be doing if the board fell to me this way. So like we said, we got four elite level wide receivers. We got Kyle Pitts. So right now we need to really start to figure out probably the quarterback position. Like we just saw Anthony Richardson and Joe Burrow come off. But for me, I absolutely love Kyler Murray this year. So I'm going to be taking Kyler Murray here at the six seven. And I do think we get a points per game advantage with Kyler Murray. But we've absolutely up to this point addressed the wide receiver position. And like we said, round seven. And this is probably going to be our last pick. And then we're going to be going full in on this running back, drafting a ton of guys. We've got our elite level tight end. If you think Kyle Pitts is elite, which I do, we got our elite level quarterback in Kyler Murray. And so then I'm going to take a high upside shot because I have addressed the position enough that I do want a game breaker league winner. And to me, that is a guy like an Xavier worthy if everything were to fall for him. So like we said, through the first seven rounds, we've absolutely hit with Jamar Chase, Nuka Collins, Jalen Waddle, Cooper Cup, Kyle Pitts, Kyler Murray, Xavier worthy. And I know my beautiful face is here in front of our roster. You're going to be able to see just a little bit here. Like when we're looking at a roster, we already have our first bench spot. So we're absolutely super deep at wide receiver, which is going to help us as we continue on in this draft. So we are going to start this kind of running back charade that we're going to be doing. And so when we start here, Javante Williams as our RB1, this is a zero running back build. It could be worse. I know a lot of people are worried about Javante Williams and that overall upside, but give me some Javante Williams here. We'll see who falls back to us. Can it be a guy like a Zach Moss? Nope. Zach Moss is off the board. Now we're back. And do we go with a high upside shot like a guy like a Trey Benson? That if everything falls right, I know people are worried a little bit out of camp that Trey Benson is the three. That Those are always the talks this season. I mean, he's a third round running back drafted, super explosive. But we're going to go with Devin Singletary. Like we said, Trey Benson goes to the pick after. So I think that
that team has done an even better job at zero RB team seven here, uh, right behind us because they got Puka Nakua, Marvin Harrison Jr. And they've kind of followed a lot of the same path. We're back on the clock here and they're going, like I said, going zero running back with Gus Edwards and Trey Benson. We're back on the clock here and we got a decision between a guy like a Blake Quorum, who's like an RB three with upside, a guy like a Chase Brown who's getting a ton of hype in camp, a guy like Jerome Ford. We'll go with Chase Brown here because we do need to start taking some shots on this upside. Man, if I could have gotten like a Joe Burrow to fall to me, having a Jamar Chase, that would have been an elite level stack there. But we're back on the clock and Zach Charbonnet was in consideration this last pick. I'm going to hit on Zach Charbonnet. So we've absolutely addressed the running back position with four running back picks back to back to back to back. We got Kyler Murray. We got Kyle Pitts, elite level tight end. I probably should have honestly, if we're being completely transparent here, I almost wish I would have gone Mark Andrews and then I was able to pick a guy like a T Higgins or a George Pickens. I do think Cooper Cup has elite level upside this year. So I'm not worried. And especially in this wide receiver room where we have a guy like a Jamar Chase and Nico Collins, Jalen Wall and Cooper Cup. But those are just some of my thoughts as we are just drafting here. We're back on the clock here and we probably need to take another running back. Give me a guy like Jalen Wright. And right now we have what? Five upside running back shots on this roster, which makes me super excited. And we're coming, like we said, we've absolutely hammered the running back position to kind of make up for our lack of depth at the running back position. But at this point in the draft, like you said, this is only a 15 round draft. We will be taking and we still need a defense and a kicker. So we're going to have to take those. So we have one more bench spot available and we're just going to look at the overall who's all available and out there. And you know, if we're being completely transparent, the wide receivers dry up super fast. So give me a guy like Rico Dowdle, who is the RB2 for the Dallas Cowboys. And then you guys will see me draft a kicker and you will see me draft a defense, whoever that ends up being. Koo, welcome to the team. And the Miami Dolphins, welcome to the team. So really, if we start to look at our overall roster here and we pull this up for you guys, what you're going to see is, like we said, the team doesn't look bad. I honestly, like I said, zero running back. It sometimes feels a little bit outside my comfort zone because you're like, oh, goodness gracious, Caleb. RB1, Javante Williams, RB2, Devin Singletary. But then you start to look and you're like, wow, Jamar Chase, Nico Collins, Jalen Waddle, Cooper Cup. Like if Nico Collins is a top 10 wide receiver, Jamar Chase is a top 10 wide receiver, Cooper Cup can be a, ba- a high end wide receiver too, even if he gets to wide receiver one numbers. And Jalen Jalen Waddle is where he's always been, where he has high end potential on a week by week basis. You got Kyle Pitts. Like we said, if Mark Andrews was there, I feel a little bit better, but even still having Kyle Pitts, I feel great about this roster. We got an elite level quarterback and we don't feel like we sacrificed any depth because we do still have Xavier Worthy, high upside shot for a wide receiver on the bench. And then we got a boatload of running backs. So zero running back can definitely work if you do zero running back correctly. I just want you guys to know you can do zero running back. You can have a ton of success. So if you like fantasy football content, hit that like and subscribe button. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. A lot more content to come, a lot more content over the next few weeks. Like I said, we're going to help you win some fantasy football championships this year. So like I said, hit that like and subscribe button and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.